Hello, this is Ashley with Mill and Jill Crafts, and today I'm going to show you how to make the three different basket weave stitches for our king's hoop uh, in the nativity. You can see here I've got three different weaves for each of the kings. They each get their own kind of robe. So we're going to start by learning for number one here. So I'm going to work with six strands of the floss color 822, 822. And so that means we don't have to split any thread. We're just going to start with a nice long strand. So I'm going to come up here at the bottom of your screen and at the bottom of this line, wherever the bottom of that line is, I think it might just barely intersect with the camel. And then we're going to pull our thread and use this line right here as our guide to make our first set of stitches. We're going to make a foundation set of stitches. So you can see if I pull it here to the side, it's not where I want it. I want to not see any of the line. I don't want to be erring on the side of this, of the body. I want to stay on the robe side, but still cover that line. So I'm going to lay that to where I think it looks great. And then I'm going to hold it out of the way with one hand. And then I'm just going to slide the tip of my needle. You can see if I scoot it over just a little bit. I'm going to slide the tip of my needle right under this thread and I'm right on, oh, I'm splitting threads. You can see my hole there. I'm right on the line. All right. So this lands out to where I want it to. And we're going to pull our thread whew, there we go, all the way down. Now, unlike satin stitch, where I need to come back down here and then go up to make the next line, we need a little bit of space, just a teeny bit of space between each of our lines. So I'm actually going to come up, I'm going to fill in the skinny side, the smaller side first. Um, so I'm going to come up right above this down point here on our line. And right now what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if this is going to be too close together and I can tell that it's going to be too close together because as I line my needle up next to it, I'm starting to shove this thread out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to scoot up the line just a teeny bit and then check my lines and that's much better. You just want it to sit right next to it. That's how, what kind of a gap we're going for. So we'll pull this guy up and through and then we're going to do the same thing with the thread. I'm going to lay it down and you can see there's just a little bit of fabric, a little bit of daylight if you will, in between each stitch. So then I'm going to peek here and I'm going to check and I'm going to say without this, right about here is when I start to not be able to see this down line. So it's going to have to go down before that point. So probably right in here, we'll peek and see a little bit. Maybe right about there on the line is where you're going to want that to be. You can see that my needle's scooting the floss out of the way a little bit, but if it doesn't and my needle's just under it, my floss stays lined up how I want it to be. And then I'll pull that down. And then we're going to repeat going up on this side to make our next line. Here. And we're just going to fill in all of the body with stripes at this same angle. So you can see I'm coming up for my next one. Again, testing the angle. I feel like it might be just a teeny bit close. So I'll come up on the line again. That feels better. Pull up. And then for this shorter distance, I don't really have to lay it down. I know that it's just going to be a little bit above my previous stitch. Similar distance to the stitch um, needle points I already have on this line. And then we repeat again. All right, I finished this top little section here. Now I'm gonna make my next big long stitch. And again, I'm gonna test where it's gonna lay. And you can see with the stitches I've already made, 
but none of this is perfect. We're not going for exact science right here. The beauty of the basket weave is if you put in a little work right now, it will all really sort itself out in the weave as you stitch it. We just wanna make sure that we're keeping a little bit of space in between our stitches so that they are not touching because that'll make it harder to get our needle in between when we go to weave our stitches here. Ooh. Coming out. Um, so we'll just keep making foundation stitches until I've covered this whole shape. All right, we've finished all of our foundation stitches and now we're gonna work on weaving in the other direction of stitches. So let's pull our instructions here in for a second. And so we're gonna be doing over two, under two is our main pattern. And it's gonna be easiest to practice this pattern if we start on a section of thread that has a long section without any adds or minuses. So on this guy, that's going to be right here. You see this thread, I've got a long section where I don't add any threads and I don't lose any threads on the other side. All right. Well, I lose some over here, but this starting edge is what we want to be looking at a section where there's a lot of space where this front edge does not change. That'll be easier to start learning the weave than if we were to start up here where we've got some changes happening. So we're gonna be working in pairs. See how there's two black lines going horizontally and then there's two like green lines going vertically in every section. So let's start on our first horizontal row over two, under two. And we're gonna start on this left-hand side and I'm gonna come up right here at the top of this section of, uh, long section of thread. So now we're gonna follow our pattern and I'm gonna weave with the eye of my needle rather than the point because this is easier to get the needle through without catching on anything. So we're gonna go over two, under two, Ooh, struggling to come up there. There you go, over two, under two, and then I'm just gonna pull that through. And now we repeat. Over two, you can see if you're having a hard time finding the spaces, you can come up here on the edge where there's a gap to either slide your needle in or out as needed. And there is our under two. And then we will keep going over and under until we reach the edge here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna pull my thread around until it looks like it's perpendicular to my initial stitches. I want these to be make nice little right corners in here. All right, and that looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna flip this over and check out what's happening here. I just went under two, I need to go over two, which is gonna take me right to this edge if I pull that thread straight. So I'm gonna put my needle down right here and pull down. Now remember from our pattern over two, under two, if this continued, my next stitches are gonna be under. So I'm gonna come up under this stitch to make our path back because we need two stitches that go in the same spot to make a pair of stitches that go over two, under two. Now it should be easier to find your way this time because the last thread went exactly that way, especially this first one. So we'll just slide our thread all the way over and then go down on the line next to our existing stitches. And then we'll just pull that snug. And now we're ready for line two. So. We did over two, under two. Now we're gonna offset the pattern one to the right. So that means we're gonna go under one and then over two, under two and repeat. 
All right, you can see that we moved our over to one space over. That's what gets us the under one. So I'm gonna come up on the line. And then we're gonna weave. We're gonna go under one. I'm gonna pull that a little out of the way. Let me even adjust some of these guys right here so I can see a little bit better. Under one, and now I need to go over one, two, and then under two. And then we repeat. So my last thread is here. I need to go over these two, but down just a little bit on the edge. And we'll pull that down. And then I'm going to help these guys kind of sit close together so they remain straight. And then I'm going to do the other direction back. Again, it's going to be under this last thread right here. Because I'm following the pattern. These two need to go over, then under. all the way out and then we'll pull that nice and snug I say snug because we don't want it tight that will start to pucker the edges but we do want to pull tight enough that our thread is pulled straight and pull that down all right round three or pair row three however you want to think about it so pair three we're moving our stitches again one to the right. So that means we're gonna go under two, then over two, under two. Right? Under two is what's happening first on this side. So I come up one thread width down. So this time I'm gonna go under two stitches first, and then over two stitches, and then under, there you go under two stitches. Now as we get more familiar with this pattern, you're going to start seeing some things that are familiar that will help you as we get into this more confusing bit up here as we start adding and losing a lot of lines. You can see that every time the pattern adjusts, this thread right here, as it goes under, is going to go under one strand that's over and one strand that's under the previous line and that will help me as I weave from left to right here to be looking you can see here with my under two that this matches oh I caught a thread though there we go this matches what's happening right before it on the previous row so start looking for things that are familiar to you so that as you weave across you can feel confident that you've got it right over two under two and then over two finishes into the corner and then Mm. Okay, here as we get close to this edge above the camel, if I throw this thread all the way into place, you can see that I can see the end of these two stitches a little bit. So that means I need to make my next stitch back the other direction on the outside of those stitches so that they are covered up here. Oh, and a little knot. That one pulls out easy. So this corner has a full over two to finish its pattern there. I'm gonna keep adding some more rows offsetting. In fact, I think I'm gonna show you one more here from our diagram and then I'll stitch for a second and then we'll catch up as we move up our row. So for row three, sorry, four here, 
you can see that we're gonna go over one, under two, and then over two, under two. This is the last row before we reach the repeat. Then we're gonna be back to over two, under two. So this one, over one, under two, over two, under two, is what's happening right here. All right, so on this row, you can see that my first stitch made it all the way over here, but then I couldn't see any more ends coming out. And these ones were under stitches, so I came up here to then go across because I didn't need to fill in any more space right there. Now for my fifth pair, it's gonna be exactly like my first line because there's four rows and then it repeats. So I'm gonna go over two, under two. All right, from this point on down, it's just going to be a simple matter of following the pattern because I have this straight line all the way down because I finished figuring out what goes right here. So I'm going to jump up here and start moving up. Now you can see I probably have enough space for one stitch right here and then my second stitch, so the way back, is going to interact with this guy right here. So this first path up I don't have to think too hard. So what we're gonna do is this is an over two, under two line. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna find an over two, under two line that has stitching above it so I can figure out what happens next. So if I go up one, I'm gonna go over one, under two, over two, under two. So I gotta go over one first to get this first line across. So, we come up here on the edge, and I'm gonna go over one, and then under two. Let's move this guy over here so we can see it a little bit better. And then continue weaving across. Now, if you've been observant, this next couple of stitches are over two and then under two, just like our base pattern is. You can see that I'm using both hands, stitching with my left and my right. You do not need to stitch with your non-dominant hand. Typically, if I was stitching this not on film for you, I would just stitch it upside down. So then my right hand would be ready to stitch from right to left, starting on this side. But since I'm filming for you guys, I decided to make my life slightly difficult and stitch with my non-dominant hand. So don't feel like you need to do that. Rotate your hoop until the stitching angle feels good for whatever hand you are using. All right, under two, over two, under one little teeny stop. Here, so I'm going to slide the tip of my needle under, push it in. And then we're going to follow this back. Now this very first one, remember I went just over one strand and everything's in pairs. It's over two, under two. So that means I'm going to end this stitch over this guy. And you can see that's right where this stitch starts. So you kind of slide it out of the way a little bit and sneak your needle on the outside. Oh, and I just broke a thread. Okay, it's okay. I've stitched one too many times there. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna do our next row up, which I've ended with two over right here on the edge. So I'm gonna look for a two over on the edge so again, my next row up this time is going to be an over one, under two, over two, under two, because I added a thread in the middle of this stitch. So I'm gonna come up here on the line, check and make sure that I'm actually on the line. And I'm gonna go over one and then under two. And I can see that this pattern right here where everything intersects looks correct. So I picked the right part, 
And then I'll just keep going over two, under two, the rest of the way across. All right, one more time before I move on here, let's talk about, again, I'm adding a thread. So I'm gonna come back to my guide and I finished as an under one right here on the edge, right next to this thread. So I'm gonna find an under one on the edge and it means my row above is gonna be an over two, under two. Again, a tricky spot here to come up. I'm sliding my needle out underneath it, which from behind looks like I'm coming up at an angle. Instead of straight up at it, I'm sliding it in under. So we're going over to find the right thread under two. And yep, that looks like the right pattern. And so we'll keep stitching with that. All right, so you just keep continuing following this method of referring back to your pattern to add lines. And you're gonna keep stitching and you're gonna be able to weave basically all the way to the top. If we look here at our hoop, you can see that I was able to get the weave basically all the way to the top. Now, if you get to these last few stitches and it's just too difficult, to get your needle through or figure out what's going on, don't worry about it. Just leave those stitches unwoven. You can see here at the tops of our other kings that we're not gonna be able to do the weave there. So if you can't do it here, it's okay. A couple stitches that aren't woven in are just gonna blend in because they're gonna be teeny tiny and basically feel like the width of an over two. So you get to keep stitching and Check back in for videos for two and three. You can do it. Keep stitching.